Instead of just looking at charts where the sun is the size of a bowling ball and then we list the earth as a peppercorn and Saturn is a marble, I'm going to try and show you a better sense of scale through some scaled images of our solar system. So here we have Earth compared to our Sun. So picture this as the peppercorn sitting right next to a bowling ball. Some of the major moons in our solar system. These moons right here belong to the planet Jupiter. They're often referred to as the Galilean moons as they were the first of the four moons of Jupiter discovered by Galileo. Then you can look at Mars, Phobos, and Deimos, the two moons of Mars. Just a few of the moons listed here. Earth compared to our moon. Here we can see a comparison of moons. Proper name of our moon is Luna. This is one of the moons, many moons, of Saturn. And just to give you a sense of scale, we're going to backdrop against that the contiguous U.S. So very small moon or large relative to a whole state. There are one, two, three, four, five, six moons that could fit, moons, six Earths that could fit within the Saturn ring system. This is how it would appear if Earth had Saturn's ring system. And flip that around. This is Earth as viewed from Saturn. So this is an image from the Cassini-Huygens mission. And this mission also then turned its cameras to have a picture taken of Earth. In case you're wondering what day that happened, that was July 19, 2013. Hopefully you looked good in the picture. Little certificate, I waved at Saturn on that particular day. Side by side, Earth as viewed from Saturn, the Cassini mission, and then this is the Mercury messenger mission. So Earth and the moon as viewed from Mercury, and Earth, and you can't make out the moon as we're so incredibly far away with a view from Saturn. This is a more detailed image so that you can see the Earth and the moon from the Cassini mission. A little comic here by Nathan Pyle. And if you really wanted to color the solar system in elementary school, this is the worksheet you'd uh, want to give to kids. Probably not as uh, crystal clear, our solar system. In 2017 was the first time we had a satellite, a spacecraft, travel through the rings of Saturn. And this is the relative size of Earth, backdrop against the majority of the North American planet. This is viewing Earth from Mars, and this is Mars from Earth. Sunsets on Mars are blue, for the same reason sunsets on Earth are red, reddish-orange. Jupiter, with the North American continent, continent as a foreground image. Jupiter's just massive. Remember, shoot a marble compared to the bowling ball sun, all of a sudden Jupiter's quite small. Earth as compared to Jupiter. And a fun way to think about the scale of our solar system, top to bottom of a football net is Jupiter height and the standard football, or what you might call soccer ball, would be Earth. Put in perspective for you. What might you be looking at here? Maybe identify the red spot, the great storm of Jupiter.
you're looking at Jupiter's south pole. Show you the evolution of our photographic ability. 1879, one of the very first photographs of Jupiter, compared to a 2014 image. Jupiter's rings from the inside, the first ever view captured by the spacecraft Juno. And you may not have realized this was the star pattern of Betelgeuse. How big is the sun? Well, let's think about it. if the sun were hollow, you could fit about one and three tenths million Earths inside. Think of our bowling ball. 1.3 million peppercorns would fit inside. This is how many Earths could fit in one sun. We're going to switch the scale up a little bit. The Earth, instead of being peppercorn, let's for a moment think of it as a basketball. Ask yourself two questions. One, what size object would represent the moon if the Earth were the size of a basketball? And then also think about what size or how many steps or paces away from the Earth would that object you selected to represent the size of the moon be? So again, the two questions, if the Earth has reduced the size of basketball, what size object would you put here to represent the size of the Earth? And how far away would you place that object? We're going to let the great Derek Mueller share with you the research that he has uncovered in uh, asking people that very same set of questions. This is uh, representing the Earth. Okay. Ooh. And this represents, what do you think? Yes. Now, uh, our first uh, challenge is how far apart uh, are they? Like, uh, roughly. Like, roughly, about that much. Okay. Uh, I guess maybe about that far, maybe. About that far? Hang on. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Roughly? Uh, yeah, okay. roughly. About like that? <laughs> I'm okay. guessing, but yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know, maybe that. <laughs> okay. Like this far? I'm feeling it's like here. Somewhere. Rough, right there. And this is really difficult. All right, all right. Let's let's. Uh... Okay, I'm just gonna stand here. Okay. Can I? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Seat of my pants upside here. Okay. These are some images I found on a Google image search for the Earth and the Moon. Diagrams that are not to scale are pretty common, and I understand why we make them. So you can show the detail without showing all that uninteresting space in between. But they can have a problematic effect on learning because they give people the wrong idea about the relative proximities of things. Now, if we want to talk about the distance between the Earth and the Moon, yeah. it's actually... It's about here. So this is why we tend to underestimate how far away the Moon is from Earth, because this would fill up a lot of space in a textbook. You'd probably have a lot of fold-out pages if you really wanted to see the approximate distances that planets are relative to each other and far away from the Sun. The Moon, not the contiguous U.S. across in width. The average distance between the Earth and the Moon is 384,400 kilometers. And one little note of trivia to lock into your mind is that uh, all planets in the solar system fit between the Earth and the Moon. Now, of course, the Sun doesn't, as that would be a star rather than a planet. How large is the Sun? If you took all eight planets and lined them up side by side, they would only span the distance of this black arrow. The black dot right here in the upper left is Mercury passing in front of the Sun. It looks close to the Sun, but it's actually 36 million miles away from the Sun. Here is more representative of accurate for scale. This is an accurate for distance. The size of our Sun, pinhead, peppercorn, peppercorn, pinhead. We didn't put a marker for Ceres or the asteroid belt on our chart. Shooter marble, marble, coffee bean, coffee bean. The Sun is viewed from each of the planets. So from Earth, we think about the Sun being relatively that size when we look up into the sky with safe glasses to view the Sun. This would be Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. 
So, very small dot of the sun, very chilly in our outer planets. And a little sense of scale of our planets, Earth and the Venus, the two largest on this uh, scale. Mars, Mercury, Eris, dwarf planet, Pluto, dwarf planet, Luna, a moon, Charon, a moon of the dwarf planet, Pluto, Ceres, another dwarf planet. And just for our sci-fi friends, relative size of the Death Star, the planet destroyer. Imagine being the astronomer who looked through their telescope and first discovered Mimas. This is one of the planets, uh, moons of the planet Saturn. That would be terrifying. Death Star chronology. First appearance, 1977, 1980. Discovered the Saturn moon Mimas. So that would be a bit terrifying to see that through your telescope. Is there a planet destroyer out there? Mimas, where are you going? Shh, you'll ruin it. Ruin what? Wait for it. Earth. Oh, the Death Star! I knew this day would come! Never gets old. I'm not falling for this again, Mimas. Great comic series here of uh, these planet references. Very up-to-date with things in the world of astronomy by Hadria Hermeli. I think I pronounced that correctly. Probably didn't. Let's look at a sense of scale for our closest neighboring star. Obviously our closest star being Sol or our Sun, but our closest neighboring star is Proxima Centauri, this star right here. Now the entire Alpha Centauri star system is what's closest to the Sun. If you were to look at an internet search engine, it would probably pop out Alpha Centauri as the closest star to us because it is the biggest of the stars of the system. This is only accurate for size. This isn't accurate, of course, for distance to the Sun. But if you want to be really nitpicky, Proxima Centauri is the closest star to our Sun. If the Sun were the size of a bowling ball, Alpha Centauri would be a basketball and on our scale of the Sun a bowling ball distance, we'd have to pace out all the way to Cleveland, Ohio, and put a marker next to the basketball saying this represents our closest star if the Sun were a bowling ball all the way in Millville, Utah. Our closest neighboring galaxy is the Andromeda Galaxy. The Andromeda Galaxy. If we wanted to go and borrow a cup of sugar from our closest neighboring galaxy, for that we'd have to place a placard saying that this represents the location of the Andromeda Galaxy from Millville, Utah on planet Earth just before you hit the ring system of Saturn in our actual solar system. Former student of mine, Dr. Raisler, now doctor, she has done the calculations, and she did those back in high school in my very first Astronomy Universe class. So thanks to Dr. Raisler for calculating way back when that the distance the Andromeda Galaxy is from us on our scale of using the soling, bowling ball as a sun is all the way right before you get to the rings of our actual Saturn in our actual solar system. If the sun was scaled down to the size of a white blood cell, so very much smaller than our bowling ball, if the sun were scaled down to the size of a white blood cell, the Milky Way, the galaxy we live in, would be the size of the continental or contiguous U.S. If Andromeda were brighter, this is how it would look in our night sky compared to the moon. If we want to wait around, in about three billion five hundred million years, this will be our view of Andromeda. Totally worth the wait of a few billion years. Distance, a little bit harder to try and show visually as impressive as some of the previous pictures in this presentation, but here's a good look at the vast differences, and you can see why these are called the inner planets and this the outer planets with the dwarf planet there. Inner planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and then we've got a region of dwarf planets here, and then Eris. Thinking about beyond our solar system, this is the region of most of the planets that we have been able to find thus far. Just think how vast our galaxy is, and how vast the Andromeda galaxy is, and 
keep asking yourself that question that does incite cosmic loneliness, but are we alone? The amount of detail that we've been able to cover from or gather from our solar system is thanks to so many missions. Here's our Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto slice to form this one celestial body. Thanks to the New Horizons mission, we're able to get that piece there. And let's end this presentation with thinking if you can think about what these pictures are. Moons, dwarf planets, planets, 